Hello, everybody. We are going to be trying out Schwinke liquid charcoal for the first time and then comparing it to nitrom liquid charcoal. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't take an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof. Critiques, tutorials, professional development, and workshops. I did do a previous stream using the Nitrom liquid charcoal. And this is the drawing that I ended up with. I started it on the live stream, but then went back in afterwards to firm up some of the details. I went in and I added this figure up here in the upper left. This is Sweeney Todd, who they're to be, of course. <laughs> And this was nice because I, I got an opportunity to really think through the material and figure out how to use it. Let's take a look at the Schmincke liquid charcoal. And it's different because the Nitrom liquid charcoal, it, it just comes in this one tube. But look at this. I, I mean, this is really good marketing, actually. These come in three different colors. This one is peach stone black. This one is cherry pit black. And the third one is grapeseed black. I mean, doesn't it already sound yummier? <laughs> it has food names on top of it. And it's similar in that it does come in these tubes as well. So I'm going to test these out first, and then we'll do a short demo on how to apply it within the context of a portrait. And tell me in the chat, what's your history with liquid charcoal? Did you find out about it through us? Do you have no idea what I'm talking about? Or have you been using it for a while? Because I was pleasantly surprised. I didn't like it that much on the live stream, but now I've changed my mind. Okay, so let's just test one image at a time, one liquid charcoal at a time. Okay, so this one is peach stone. And I'm going to keep this one separate from the others. And I have decided that I do really like these bristle brushes to use. And so basically, I just take a little water to activate it. Oh, it's way more liquidy. Oh my gosh, it's so runny compared to the Neutron. Look at that. See how it, it's like really, really runny. Okay, let me show you the comparison though, because the Neutron liquid charcoal, look at this. Does everybody see? I mean, that's not fair. I put on some water. Okay, let's do it again <laughs> because we can't really see the comparison. Okay, so that's the Neutron. Peach stone. Okay, let's put it again with no water. Wow, it is so flowy. Do you see that, you guys? It is so thin. Oh my gosh. I mean, the neutron charcoal really is thick, like paint. This is super, super runny. Okay, let's try it. So here it is washed in. And let's try doing a gradient. And let me take some of it totally straight. Oh my gosh, it's so, so liquidy. Wow, is that as dark as it gets? That's not very dark. So I'm putting it on straight right now. Wow, it's it's really runny and it doesn't have the darkness. So let me show you. Where's my pencil? I can never find things. Did everybody see my post yesterday about my horrible card of art supplies? <laughs> oh, you guys should see my room. Okay, so let's label this. This is Schmincke P. 
peach stone black. And this is Schmincke peach stone black straight. As a comparison, let me show you guys this. Okay, so this is the Neutron. All right, if I put it on straight, does everybody see how dark that is? And if I layer it, oh, I can tell I already like the Neutron one better just for the value range. I mean, this is like no value range. This is like a mid gray. And then if I add some water to it, This is the Neutron. Let's do very light value for the Neutron. That's crazy. Okay, so the Schmincke has no value range. <laughs> neutron. Liquid. Charcoal. All right, let's try some of the other colors. We also have grape seed black. I'm just curious how much of a difference there is in the color. Okay, so this is the... Oh, weird. You know something? The grape seed black is thick. You know, that makes me wonder. Maybe there was just too much liquid. I'm going to try squirting out the peach stone one more time to see if it really is runny or if there just was stuff. Let's see. Is there? Yeah, it seems like it really is just runny. Okay, well, the grape seed is not runny, apparently. Let's try the grape seed. Okay, so grape seed, I'm going to use this. Whoa, that is, that is really thick. Oh my gosh, that's so strange that between the colors, the thickness is so different. Wow, that is really thick. I feel like, oh my gosh. So I'm putting it on straight. It's even thicker than the Neutron, and it's also a very cool black. Okay, so let me show you guys up close. And actually, let me label it so there's no confusion. Okay, so this is grape seed. Is it stone? Grape seed black. Okay. Schmincke. Let's do again a little bit of a gradient so I can see where that's going. Oh my gosh, that is so rich. Wow. I feel like that's more intense than the Neutron. And this one, I really can see the color shift. All right, let me hold this up close. Okay. Does everybody see the Neutron charcoal? It's very cool and it does get thick, but this is even thicker. And you can tell from looking at the dry brushing. Now, does everybody see? how warm the Neutron is. And th this almost feels like blue to me. It's extremely cool. It's very cold, dark. This is my personal preference. I happen to like a warmer charcoal color, but that just depends on your personal preference. Okay, let's try Cherry Pit Black. So far, I'm going to say I wouldn't use the peach stone myself. Maybe some people really like that. But if you want to get a light gray, I mean, you can get that with any of these other ones. Okay, let's try. And by the way, I'm using watercolor paper. Okay, this one just had some water in it, but you can see it is pretty thick. Oh, wow, that's really thick. That's so weird. Why would they have two that are so thick and then have one that's so runny? I, I'm going to try it again. I, I feel like this is a mistake. I feel like maybe there's just, maybe I need to just like push. 
I just, or is it just, yeah, I'm not getting any substance out of there. Okay, let's try the cherry pit. Oh my gosh, that's, e I feel like this is even thicker. Wow, that is really thick. I mean, this feels a lot more like acrylic paint. It's much thicker than the Neutron. Okay. Wow, that's really thick. Okay, so the grape seed and the cherry pit are both very thick, thicker than the Neutron. I mean, this really has body. All right, I'm going to label that cherry pit black. And again, let's do a gradient. I'm really surprised. Maybe I got a defective peach stone. I don't know. That just seems strange to me that it would be that liquidy. But I pressed a lot and I wasn't getting any results. Okay, so this is their warm liquid charcoal. And it's amazing. There are a lot of differences, especially when you look at them side by side. I mean, at first glance, we might just say, oh yeah, it's gray. But then look at this one. It's super blue. And then this one, is that one warmer? Yeah, th this, the cherry pit black is warmer all right, this <laughs> cherry pit black is warmer than the neutron charcoal. And then the grape seed black is very cool. I think between the three, I I'm going to try the demo with the cherry pit black. But I do feel like the neutron liquid charcoal is smoother. I, I feel like there's a little bit of a grain in the Schmincke liquid charcoals, because even if you look at my strokes, do you see how that doesn't have texture, but this one has more streaks in it? This one also is a little bit more streaky. That's so weird. That is so not what I thought it was going to look like at all. So weird. You never know until you actually go in and try it. Let's see what people are saying in the chat. <laughs> Blue Wolf, who, by the way, is the wonderful person who sent these to me to try out. And I just love it when you guys send me art supplies because I would normally never bother to buy this stuff. Because, oh boy, those art store bills, <laughs> they really start to add up after a while. So I appreciate not just people telling me that it exists. I didn't know Schmincke had liquid charcoal. But then also to send it to me is even better because then I can demo it on a live stream. Anyway, Blue says, I think liquid charcoal is amazing. I think it's a gateway drug <laughs> from drawing to painting. I think you're right. I think that it has qualities of charcoal that we are familiar with. But at the same time, it's also very painterly, if you want it to be. I happen to like it better as a painterly material. So actually, if you look at this one, all this stuff in the face, this is all liquid charcoal. So I painted it on first, and then you can see I'm lifting with a paper towel to model the flesh on the face better. But then if you look at the woman, I did a lot of charcoal pencil up here. So you can see the grittiness that happens. And then this bottom part, this is all brushwork down here too. So you can see that. So I happen to like it better as a more painterly medium with a little touch of drawing, but everybody has a totally different take on this. Blue is saying, could the Schmincke be something that was meant to be an underpainting for a charcoal piece? Maybe why it's not that black. I don't know. 
Although that would make sense because I, I, it's so, so wimpy. I mean, it's dry now. That is the darkest. This was the straight schminke. I mean, like no contest in terms of value. Oh, well, blue also follows up. I got a neutron tube that was runny like the peach one. It may just be that tube. Maybe. Comcuke says maybe stick a toothpick in it and stir it. That, that's what I think. I feel like I just got a bad tube or something. Ginger says, what's the difference? I thought they were going to be different colors, but they look the same. The biggest difference to me, Ginger, the grape seed is really cool. It, it's almost blue. The cherry pit is very warm. This is a more maybe burnt umber tint. The peach stone is not as cool as the grape seed, but it definitely feels cool. It doesn't feel like a warm black. Yeah, Lisa says it's odd that three colors in the same product line are so different in viscosity. Typically, they know artists would use them together. Yeah, it's it's a little disappointing. <laughs> it sort of makes me question the quality because with art supplies, you, you do want consistency because you know, oh, I like this product for this brand. And so you're probably going to buy it multiple times. But if you find that it's different once in a while that's frustrating i feel like the same thing with food you know you have this one great dish and you go and one week it's not good that makes me sad <laughs> seven a says so a warm a cool and a kind of neutral i would group these two as being cool this one definitely warm but this one again it's hard to see because the gradient is so light Carolyn says, charcoal is made from burning plant matter, right? I wonder how much difference the starting material makes to the tint you end up with. I don't know a lot about how it's made, but I suspect that there's something in the process. Maybe certain woods naturally look cool. That'd be fun. I'd love to go to a charcoal factory. Wouldn't that be cool? I should see if I can worm my way into some art supply factory. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Carolyn says, are they adding a slight amount of pigment to tint it? Bunny Kisses says, is liquid charcoal erasable? A little bit. Not a lot, though. Not to the point that I felt I could rely on it. Let's try erasing the schminke. Actually, let me erase the neutron first. And then you guys can see better how that looks. So I'm just going to do some strokes. Oh my gosh. It's, maybe it's the watercolor paper. This is like not erasing at all. Oh, weird. I did it on charcoal paper and it erased a little bit. Maybe it's just the paper. Oh my gosh. That erased so well. Does everybody see that? What the heck? That took no effort. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm kind of like the Shiminke because, oh my gosh. So when I did some eraser work here, it, it worked a little, but not that well. Like to the point that I stopped doing it. But, oh my gosh, I can't believe how quickly that erased. Let me try another. Okay, so it looks like the very very dark area this doesn't erase but this is really clean does everybody see that wow i'm so surprised okay let's try it on the cherry pit black okay so this one does erase but you know something it doesn't erase as well so you can see a little bit but it seems like out of the three, the grape seed is the one that erases the best. Let's try the peach stone. Let's see if this one erases. Oh my gosh, that one doesn't erase at all. 
Oh, that's so weird. Okay, so the grape seed erases very well. The cherry pit barely erases. Peach stone does not erase. Because that was my one little thing that I was hoping I'd be able to do would be to erase it. But the neutron really was not that helpful. Joe says, need the tube to mix anything together in the liquid charcoal. Yeah, I haven't tried that before. Oh, I'm so glad you're here for the first time, Day Space. Everybody right now, type into the chat, me. I just want to see who's here. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> because there are a lot of people here. And I just, I love seeing all the names. So just me. And, and you don't have to, but I just think it's really nice to hear from people who maybe are not in the chat all the time. And that's okay. Totally. Valentina says, there's a charcoal making festival in the UK. Oh, I want somebody to fly me over there and try it. <laughs> okay. So blue says popped out some plops on mine. Peach was thicker. My cherry was more runny. When you first open the tube, it oozes out. Maybe different layer in the tube. But still, that's a bummer that the material is not that consistent. Orangina says, love to see a charcoal factory. It would be like a Mr. Rogers episode. I should try to worm my way in. It's just really hard if you don't get in touch with somebody who's nice. <laughs> Some of these people at the art supply companies are not nice. And I always wondered why they wouldn't want their product to be spread out more. I had a company once say to me, well, we go to this annual art educators conference and there's a materials fair. We don't need to advertise on YouTube. I was like, really? You think that that's sufficient <laughs> to get your supply art? I mean, I've never met a group of people who were so unwilling to advertise their product. <laughs> oh, okay. So Blue says they actually use the fruit pits and make them into charcoal, no additional pigment. Let's take a look at what's on the box, what it says. Uh, natural pigment made of careful carbonization of cherry pits gum arabic base without animal ingredients dilutable with water gum arabic just makes me think of lithography because you use gum arabic non-stop <laughs> i like the smell of it i i don't know maybe it just reminds me of lithography class oh i love this thank you so much everybody for saying hello this is just the sweetest thing when all of you are willing to do that all right, let's give this a shot on top of a portrait. And I, I think you all know, well, you should, if you don't. <laughs> if you don't, I'm very disappointed in you. That Aaron Tveit is debuting Sweetie Todd on February 9th. It's like really, really close. <laughs> and I, I want to do some more Sweetie Todd drawings because he's just... Oh. <laughs> the last one I did, I sketched out with vine charcoal. And I found I couldn't really add it after I had added the liquid charcoal. Now the compressed charcoal... This was fine, and I did really like adding the charcoal pencil on top. Actually, this got really good coverage over the liquid charcoal. All right, so we, we need to draw him as this lunatic murderer, and I've been wanting to do just a really fast gestural one. This one... I wanted it to be fast and gestural, and it just didn't turn out that way. And so I'm going to try to do one that's way more spontaneous today.
and he's a murderer, not a nice dude. By the way, the paper I'm using, actually, this isn't paper. It, it's a board like the other one. It's called Canson Art Board. Can't remember if I put it in the video description, but I'll update that later because sometimes I don't always remember to do that. Tell me in the chat, when's the last time you guys used charcoal? Because I did it a lot when I was a student, but the only time I really use it now is for these demos, which is sort of nice. I, I have excuses to work with various materials that I ordinarily probably wouldn't do. I'm going to try to make this one really exaggerated as well. I know you guys can't see what I'm doing, but that's sort of the point. And I have to combine references because they haven't released anything from the show yet. So I'm combining. They did release a couple images from the show, They're just one or two promo photos. But basically what I have to do, so this is the promo photo that they release. And so I'm just taking the hair and I'm sticking it on top of the other one. I can't wait until they release those promo photos more. And the thing is a lot of people post videos from the show, but I've decided since I'm going to see it in March, that I, I'm not going to watch any of the videos that people post. I, I want it to be a surprise. This is a bummer when you have a spoiler. Like, I want to be, like, right there and experiencing it for the first time. Should I might move him over a little bit. Yeah, I think he's too far to the right. And what I really want to focus on is his brow. This almost sneer he has. I don't like the placement. I'm going to wipe it out. Start again. That's one of the things I like about liquid charcoal. Put him a little higher. So let's put his eyes maybe more up here. It's funny because you would think to draw gesturally, it's about drawing faster, but it's not. It's about drawing more intentionally. I recently released a reel that was about that. And that took me a long time to figure out. I, I just always assume, like, you look at those John Singer Sargent paintings, and they, they just look like he went super fast. But in a lot of my own expressive work, I found that to not be very helpful. It just stresses me out to draw like that. So when I slow down and I'm just more intentional about things, it is really helpful. I do like charcoal. I just, it bothers me how fragile it is. And I just get worried, especially when it comes to selling work. I just, worry about the piece being too fragile or getting ruined because it was in the portfolio. And I don't like that. I mean, that's one of the reasons I started drawing with lithographic crayon is it just was so much more permanent. I didn't have to worry about that. I mean, I wish I had time to go do some proper lithography because that's wonderful. But <laughs> you need a litho press and a litho stew. And I'm like, oh man, I don't want to grind the stone. Maybe if I have a crew of people who can grind stones for me, maybe then I'll do it. But for now, uh uh.
Okay, so that's a quick Vine Charcoal sketch. Let's see what people are saying in the chat. <laughs> Calm Cuke says, now I feel like I need to start collecting the pits from my fruit. Yeah, we've done that in the past. Drusilla asked art companies to send us stuff. One of the reasons I have too many art supplies. But honestly, I just got so tired of the flakiness, people saying they would do things and never doing them. And I had to change. It was just such a headache to deal with. I just was sort of done with it. Cool. I'm so glad. Catherine from Illinois. Lisbeth from Denmark. I'm so happy you guys are all saying hello. Oh, yeah. Canadians. Did you guys see me? I was in that TV show, The Nature of Things, the science show. And we had a episode, they had an episode called But Seriously. And they asked me to come onto the TV show and do a drawing demo of a figure, a backside. And they wanted me to talk about the butt in art history because they found my anatomy lecture. Yeah, who saw that? It was really weird to see myself. I was like, wow, I look so slick. <laughs> this is not what I really look like. Ha, John says, summer barbecue was the last time I used charcoal. Orangina says, what brand is erasing? Well, I'm still torn on it being liquid and similar to watercolor. I love the man you did combo of drawing on top. I did a charcoal on a workshop with you last year. It seems like the grapeseed, Schmincke, is the one that erases the best. And it's not a lot like watercolor. I feel like the flow, I feel like it's way runnier. Once you put water in it, it just dissolves instantly. Watercolor doesn't really do that. Watercolor, I think, is a little bit more of a buildup because you're, well, if you're using a tube, it's sort of thick and substantial. And then, of course, is the color factor. By the way, if anybody wants to learn more about charcoal, we do have a charcoal workshop. And this is coming up Saturday, February 3rd. And we do have some spots available. And the workshops are just so much fun because you get to work with a small group of artists and I provide all kinds of comprehensive materials and curriculum for everybody to work from. And we will keep registration open until the workshop fills or two days before the workshop. And then the other workshop later in February is clothing and drapery, which I know a lot of people struggle with. And I, have figured out a more friendly approach to teaching it because of Jordan. <laughs> Jordan taught me about the different types of clothing that are out there. But this is a workshop that we've never done before. And it's a topic that is very relevant across art forms. And charcoal, I mean, some of you could try using liquid charcoal and the charcoal workshop, which would be super fun. Oh, I'm curious, actually, tell me this. How many people have we sent to the art store <laughs> to buy something? People are always like, you guys are art supply enablers. So who here has done that? You saw something with us and then you went to the art store to buy it. <laughs> Shelby says, I'm happy you demonstrate charcoal because not many channels do. Oh, really? Shelby, I'm curious. What media do you think you see the most of? Maybe the top three or whatever. Addie says, charcoal is my favorite mark making tool, so I use it every day. Hi, Steffi. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Terry. Fantastic. Bunny kisses. Oh, man. Anna, don't remind me about Hades Town. I knew it would be good because I've listened to the soundtrack so many times, but the live performance was breathtaking. Actually, I really want to go because Jordan Fisher is playing Orpheus. And you know, I, I am going to be in town. <laughs> like I can't, this is killing my budget. Like, I don't think I can 
afford to go. But Hades Town has a beautiful soundtrack and it's really funky. It's got a lot of jazz and I guess blues. I don't know the terminology, but yeah, I would love to do some poster work on that. Catherine says, I love the erasability of charcoal, but also struggle with the fragility of it. I've been playing with Derwent tinted charcoal. It's like a watercolor erasable. Somebody needs to send me that <laughs> because now I'm curious. <laughs> Valentina says, my goal this year is to stop buying new art supplies and try to use what I have. Yeah, I don't have that goal. <laughs> that's, that's, that's instant failure goal for me. Hi, Ivy. I'm so glad you guys are saying hello. Oh, interesting. Valentina says, trying black pen pastel as a type of drawing media. I did try the pen pastels because the company sent me some samples. And to be honest, I wasn't really that impressed. I feel like it's good as a supplement, but it's not the type of material I feel like I could like, just do pen pastel. It's too limited as a material. Okay, so most common, Shelby says watercolor and marker. Catherine says acrylic and fiber. Interesting. Because, you know, I'm on YouTube. I don't watch YouTube. <laughs> That's the funny thing. The only time I watch YouTube is when I need YouTube tips. <laughs> I'll watch Nick Nimmin or vidIQ to get tips on how to use YouTube, but that's kind of it. Valentina says, how do you stop buying art supplies and commit to one medium? You're asking the wrong person. <laughs> I am not somebody to give advice for how to do that. <laughs> Bunny Kisses says, I love new art supplies. Proud to say I use all my supplies and I have lots. My problem is I buy a lot of online classes. I'm working my way through them. <laughs> By the way, everybody, did you know we are doing a giveaway to announce our new program, Open Studios Club, which is a super fun real-time work session where everybody can be on voice. So many people have asked me for this over the years. And so now we are finally putting it together. A lot of people talk to me about how they really want art friends who will speak our special language, but that it's difficult. This is a place to make art friends because you can join the sessions and you can do one time, but the biggest bang for your buck is a monthly subscription is way cheaper than the one time. Anyway, we have two sessions, one's tomorrow and one is on Thursday of this week. And if you want to join and get in on that giveaway, you will want to tag me in the general chat in our Discord. So you have to be in the Discord already because I just don't have time this week to get everybody set up and going. But the information is in the video description below, instructions for how to enter the giveaway. And if you are not sure, just go into general chat and ask about the giveaway or tag me. But this is really, really fun. And I think we'll have a great time together. So I would love for some of you guys to sign up for the giveaway. I think there are a few spots left. So you want to get in that right away because especially tomorrow is the first session. It'd be so fun to do like the inaugural <laughs> version. Okay, let's start. Getting back to my reference photo. I'm going to try something really loose. And actually, let's sketch out with the great seed. Because a lot of people, actually, where's my paper? I need my test paper. I need to see because it, it does feel pretty thick. I'm using the grape seed, by the way, everybody. Okay, that's really dark. I don't think I want something that dark. Maybe I need a lot more water. This is a topic I've been talking to a lot of people about, and I want to know what you guys think. 
I know it's very common when people start. You know, maybe I'll just go in with a big brush. I'm going to do that. A brush that's far too big. Let's try this. A lot of people I know when they are painting, you want to know what you're doing. <laughs> and so you'll go in and start with, let's say, pencil or something like that. But I'm not really a fan of starting with pencil. I feel like it's very getting distracted. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. I, I have to focus on this. The basic premise that I'm talking about is a lot of people start their paintings with pencil first. Pencil on the canvas. Same thing with watercolor. And I'd like to know, first of all, who does that? And, ooh, that's sort of fun. So one thing I do like doing is the brush and then throwing down some swipes with the paper towel. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. The point is, who here does a pencil sketch before you paint? And who here goes right into the paint? Because for me, I really like going right in with the paint. Because when I go from pencil to brush, it's a little bit of a leap. And if I'm already with the brush, I'm already in that painting mindset. So actually, yeah, because the, the charcoal sort of puddles quite a bit. I don't even know that I'm going to do a full face. Because I do like those strokes. Those are really fun. This is just me laying down the groundwork. And actually, I'm going to give him a different shirt than what is in. So this is a production photo. That's Josh Groban. And it's the very end of the musical. So I'm going to give him that same collar that is in here. Add some blood later on. Yeah, I'm really glad I added the brush first. I think it's getting me to think more gesturally. So actually I'm gonna use three different references to get this going. For me, the biggest difference between liquid charcoal and other things like watercolor and ink wash and acrylic is that it just breaks down super fast. With watercolor, you have to add way more color for it to break down. And so there's an immediacy with the wash-like look that you aren't going to get with other stuff. I really like ink wash a lot. And so that's one of the reasons I liked this material. He's also got a beard. I need to add in there. Oh, and actually, I should take a progress photo. So that way I can share it in the Discord afterwards. Let's go back to my reference photo. And I'm going to do something really bold on the eyes. And I'm going to paint it really, really slow. Let's just fill this background with something so it doesn't get too white. And here's the other thing that I like about the liquid charcoal is it's so easy to lift. So if you guys look at this, 
Oh, shoot. I had trouble on it. Like, I really can go in and lift this whole area. And it, it is really fun. It's got a sculptural feel to it, I think. And then another thing I do with my brush is that I try to make the direction of my brush follow the form. So here are the cheekbones. I'm going to push them this way. And then the lower part of the chin is more like that. So even at this early stage, you can be thinking about the direction of your stroke. All right, that's the beginning. And let's get a nice thick, maybe not this thick. Uh, well, let's just do it. <laughs> let's just try. <laughs> All right, so this is the grape seed. Where did my test paper go? I really. Of course, this is all that's available. <laughs> These are the hard copy sketches. Let's just see. Yeah, I want something thick. Okay, that's better. All right, this is why a thick brush is a great idea. Now, I'm going to do something that I think is gestural and that might look fast, but I'm going to paint it really slow. And it, it's sort of surprising. So this I'm going to do real slow. Ah, no, no, no. Go away. See how easy that was to get rid of? It wipes out so fast. So yeah, these strokes seem absurdly big, but I find them very helpful. Let's get in something really thick, like in here. So I'm layering really thick charcoal. Get something a little lighter than that. And I'm really drawing around the eyes right now. Oh, too liquidy. I mean, that's why I find the, the paper towel just so important because it'll keep doing that. But I do really like the wiping with the paper towel. I think it's really fun. more. Let's just get a little hint of the mouth. Yeah, I love the paper towel. That is like really fun. Okay, I gotta add his hair. Tell me in the chat, who here likes to paint thick and who here likes to paint thin? I've discovered I am definitely a thin painter. I, I don't like painting thick. And I think that's why for a long time I didn't really like painting that much. I mean, I thought I did. So here I'm really following the direction of the hair. I do much better when I'm not on canvas and when I'm painting really thin. That is definitely my cup of tea. Get some ears. 
And now let's switch to the other photo so I can get in the shirt. So far, between the grapeseed schminke and the nitrom, basically this is thicker. The schminke is thicker. So I'm thinking maybe I do like the schminke better. I guess the cherry pit one, I, I probably would use the cherry pit one because it's warm. This is very cool and it's not quite what I'm looking for. I just feel like I learned painting all wrong. <laughs> and if I had been taught to paint more thin, I think I would have liked it more. I don't know. It's just, I, I don't feel like thin painting is as popular as painting thickly. I mean, maybe that's just my imagination, but... At least that's what I've seen. Okay, let's see what people are saying in the chat. Take another work in progress. Alice says, I wish I can draw with big brushes like that. It looks really good. Try it. People are scared of big brushes. <laughs> They're not so easy, but you can see with the liquid charcoal, it was so easy for me to wipe things away with the paper towel. Because I do think sometimes we feel like our work is more permanent than it is. I used to think that about painting, that I would get to a point and I couldn't fix it anymore. But now that I've done a bunch of paintings where I really fixed it, repainted whole areas. I feel better about that. And so I think a lot of the intimidation of a big brush is feeling like it's so permanent, like we can't change it. So it's a little bit scary, but it's not once you do it. Like it's it's all in the anticipation. And really you can just say to yourself, okay, this is something I'm just going to try for this one piece. And if it looks like crap, too bad. That's okay to say, you know what, I know in advance, this is not going to be a good painting, but I want to try out these big brushes and I want to see what that's like. Because it is a really good experience, you guys. I highly recommend it. I just want to add a little bit of a wash. Danny says, Paper towels are one of my favorite art supplies with ink and watercolor. I'm very picky about which ones. Oh, so what are the good brands? <laughs> I think I have Bounty or something like that. I can't remember. Oh, I didn't know there was a whole art form <laughs> to picking your paper towels. I love it, though. I love that we get so nerdy about it. I mean, I don't know how many people here are in the Discord, but... I love when I pop into the art supply channels and people get so specific about their pieces and what they're trying to do and then figuring out with other people, okay, how do I actually make that happen? I'm trying to articulate his chin better. He has a nice chin. I love his chin. It's so chiseled. Okay, so Sadiq says thin for the start. Yep, Calm Cuke says thin and then slightly thicker. Yeah, and is the opposite, impasto. <laughs> Orangina is asking. I just lost the comment. Oh, here. This can be used in just a canvas. Sorry if I missed that. I guess you could, but I guess I worry that the charcoal would just sit on the surface 
of the gesso and it wouldn't be absorbed by the paper. I'm going to guess paper is better, but I could be wrong. I've never done that before. And, oh, yeah, yeah, the, the blue shop towels, the ones that you get from the hardware store, those are really good. They're very durable, and you can use them for much longer than you can use a paper towel. I, I just grabbed what was there. <laughs> okay, so let's see what people are saying about the pencil sketch. All right, so Kat says, if there's too much in the background, I just go in, but if it's simpler, I sketch. Daniel says, I like highlighter on the canvas instead of pencil for paintings. Oh, that's cool. Shelby's asking, do you teach in-person classes? Not at the moment. I tried to run two workshops here and let's just say the place I was doing it through didn't lift a finger for me. And so they didn't run. A big bummer. It's a very clicky art community here, unfortunately. And Amanda says, I use linseed oil soaked charcoal in my painting sometimes. Oh. Ivy says, can you DIY liquid charcoal? I looked it up. I, I looked up just liquid charcoal and actually most of the videos were not this stuff in a tube. Most of it was people putting charcoal powder into some water and mixing it up that way. But I like this better. I feel like this would have stronger pigment, I'm guessing. Yeah, okay, so maybe that would be it. Some pummeled charcoal, some gum arabic and water could work perhaps. And Nancy says, I did start with pencil, then saw an instructor start an acrylic with pencil, decided I'd never do that again. I like how you started your watercolors with paint. It's not as permanent as people think, because when I sketch with watercolor, I sketch really light. You probably could barely see it on the camera. And the thing is, when your painting is that light in the beginning, it's inevitably going to be covered up. And so for me, that is a feeling of freedom that whatever I do in that first layer is not going to be shown. Also with watercolor, it's the same thing with paper towel. You can lift it. I think this is much easier to lift than watercolor. I can lift with very little pressure. With watercolor, sometimes I have to scrub a little bit, which can sometimes damage the paper, which is not good. Okay, so Amanda has mixed liquid charcoal with the gesso. Okay. Okay. So Danny says, Regina Blitz for sheer absorbency. Bounty are good ones. <laughs> I feel like we should make a short on that. We should go buy all the paper towel brands and compare them and see how they work for painting. That would be a really funny short. I feel like you should make an ad for Regina Blitz. I just love that. <laughs> Eight, N-I-N, eight, best paper towels are blue shop towels. Yeah, I actually sometimes prefer those for oil painting. I mean, I do really like cotton rags as well, but they can be really handy for cleanup when it comes to oil painting. Okay, so Danny <laughs> wants to see the paper towel <laughs> short. Oh, you guys are so fantastic. <laughs> I love our audience. You guys are amazing. Okay, let's do a little bit more. Um, I was thinking maybe charcoal pencil, but now hmm, it's still really mushy. I feel like I need to add stuff in the background. I feel like there's not a lot going on back there. So at the very least, I just want to swash in something that fills. Who knows how dark it'll get later, but I just feel like a big part 
of the beginning of a any image rather is to get rid of that white that white of the page can really mess with you plus it feels good to add that i need to do a little bit more work on the collar and maybe for that i'll use a smaller brush Looks like I'm running out of grape seed. Is this grape seed? Yeah, that is the grape seed. Okay. It's so, it's really, really blue. Very, very different. These are his suspenders. Oh, shoot. I, I think I used cherry pit up here because now I'm doing grapeseed and it looks super blue. Oh man, I think I mixed them. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Maybe I should go back because I don't know if I want that blue in there. Right? Yeah, I might go back. I don't know, Matt might be fun to add some cool passages. Who would like to see me combine? The cool and the warm charcoal. See how that functions. Okay, that's the basic shirt. And let's go in and do some stuff with the facial features. I don't know. Jury's still out on that. Really want his brow to be dramatic. Getting some of the eyes in there. This I need a small brush. I can't get into that eye otherwise. Well, I'm going to try this. Let, let's do cool for the eye. I just want to see. I'm curious. Ugh! Oh, that looks like crap. Oh my God. He looks like a cartoon character. Jeez. Looks terrible. Oh my God, it looks really dumb. It looks so dumb. Okay, ugh, I hate that moment where you start adding things that are facial features and it just looks really, really bad. I'm not gonna stay that way though, I promise. I guess I would just rather it be too much than not enough. Yeah, my favorite thing is the paper towel. I, I really like that part of this. My eye looks terrible. <laughs> it's really bad. It smudges a little. Oh my gosh, I love that. Actually, I sort of like mixing the warm and cool. It's pretty interesting. Sort of fun. Let's just give him a nose. <laughs> he needs a nose. I just want to solidify some of the facial features a little more. And he has this one really pronounced wrinkle. Oh my god, he looks so bad. I just I hate the beginning of a portrait where just stuff looks so so bad. I think I need to redeem myself. Make it looser. I feel like it's not very loose. So I'm going to do a lot of removal here. That eye got way too big. He's got a great little twist in the middle. <laughs> I feel like I know it because I painted it so many times for those Moulin Rouge paintings. 
Like I, I know how his forehead wrinkles. Isn't that weird? Actually, let's get a little bit more of a wash on his nose. I think his nose is too long. Like, look at how easy that is. So easy to get rid of it. Oh, and you know something? He also has a beard. He's got a lot of scruff. Let me show. Oh, that's really fun. You guys, I love this. I don't know. The grape seed, I don't think I like the I don't like the way the grape seed feels in my brush. Oh, the mouth is not wide enough. It's way too small. Okay, and that means I need to pull this out further. I always forget this. I mean, there's I'm not a big fan of doing measurements and stuff like that, but one proportion that I do notice a lot is that the mouth is always wider than the width of the nose. I'm, oh, the, the mouth, yeah, the mouth is always wider than the width of the nose. Okay, sorry. So here's where I'm going to extend that. Trying to show my strokes a little more. I think I need to go back to the thin brush for those nostrils because they're kind of a mess right now. And we need to emphasize the shadow because this is the side of his face that's more in shadow. Too wide. Okay, let's get back to the hair. I feel like I made a mess of the hair. This. That's my favorite thing. The lift. Oh, it feels so good. Who here likes to wipe things with their paper towel? I know Danny does, but sometimes I like the paper towel or rag more than the brush. I don't know. It just feels so good. For me, that's the most important thing out of all of these options is the feel. How does the material feel in my brush? That's what I am oftentimes concerned with. Like, does it feel grainy in my brush? That type of thing. Reference photo. <laughs> Oh, I should go back to the big brush. This is not good for me to use a small brush. You guys like my palette? It's the lid of one of my horrible art supply boxes. His forehead is too big. Ah, no, 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 no. I don't like that. No, I'm just pushing some of the lighting. So the lighting is better. The reference photo of the lighting isn't great. So I'm just going to decide that the lighting is over there. Let's see what people are saying. Okay, so Raymond says, yes, Ivy, 7A, calm cuke. Oh, Lisa says, cool shadows, warm mid-tones, maybe. I like that. Yeah, Drusilla, me too. 
<laughs> Raymond says, which am I, I don't know. <laughs> like, and it just sort of mixed, but I can tell you the, the cool one is the grape seed. I didn't like the peach stone because at least the one I had was very runny. And so that leaves the cherry pit as the warmer one. Ugh. Now, of course, I keep starting pieces and not finishing them. I already have way too many things in progress. Actually, you know what I was thinking of doing? Tell me, you guys, if you would be interested in this. So... <laughs> It's so dumb. I can't believe this is something I want to do, but I, I really do want to do it. I really wanted to sculpt <laughs> a Sweeney Todd head. And it doesn't stop, it doesn't stop there. I wanted to do a Sweeney Todd head and cast it, maybe in resin or something like that. And then make a silicone mold. And I could make a short about that whole process. Because actually, it's surprising. A lot of people do ask me sculpture questions. I, I didn't think they really would because it's sort of obscure, at least compared to other things like painting. But I think that might be a cool short. I mean, it'll take a while because the casting is not cheap. But I think people might like that. Tell me in the chat, would you like to see that process? So the process would be modeling in clay, making the silicone mold, making the plaster mother mold, and then casting it in resin. Because then I could have a whole bunch of little air into base. I think that would be really cute. Plus, amongst the fans, people really like his hair, myself included. So I was like, okay, then I could sculpt his amazing hair. That would be really fun. And then I could send it to him at the theater. Oh God, this looks really bad. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> okay. We've got a lot of people who would like to see some 3D that's great. I would love to do it. It's just hard for me to make time because I have so many things. Like I still haven't put my stupid skeleton. Well, it's not stupid. I'm sorry. I still haven't put together my lifetime skeleton. I love my lifetime skeleton. I have not gotten to do that yet. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call him stupid. I'm just annoyed at myself that I haven't put it together just yet. <laughs> Aaron to make bobbleheads. Yeah, I, I'm not the bobblehead type, but uh, some people are. Remember everybody, we have this giveaway for our Open Studios Club. You can attend one session this week, tomorrow on Monday, this Thursday, and all you need to do, go into the Discord and tag me in general chat and tell me which session you would like to attend. I think last I checked, there are still a few spots left because I would love to work with some of you guys. And I know not everybody can afford some of the programs we have. So this is a chance for some of you guys to get in there if you've never gotten a chance to work with me in real time. We have a charcoal workshop, Saturday, February 3rd, work with me in real time. It's a one day workshop, three hours, $60. Clothing and drapery workshop is Saturday, February 24th. I'd love to see people get in on this. We are doing a Discord chat right after the stream, meet and post live streams. Join our Patreon group. We provide opportunities for you to share your art in weekly voice sessions. You get long written critiques from me. And most of all, you make art friends, find support in a small group of artists. Art Profess services. We have artist calls, portfolio critiques, statement editing, and personal art curriculums. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.